The Rogers Trio was one of the most popular home organs of the 60s, 70s, 80s, and early 90s. Unfortunately, most of these organs have reached an age now where they are needing some fairly serious service work on them to keep them working. Also, the oscillator system in it was analog, and today we've become so accustomed to hearing the fine digital reproduction in organs that these older instruments don't sound so good anymore. A solution, an artisan rebuild. This Rogers Trio has been completely re-outfitted with a new sound system, a new control system, and a facelift in many different ways, and we're going to see exactly how that was accomplished. As we move to the back of the Rogers Trio, those of you who have seen the inside of a Rogers organ before will recognize the ceramic oscillators and uh, these boards. Now one of the first things that we get to do is to have the fun of cutting all the cables that go out to these boards. We want to be very careful when we cut the keyboard cables that we cut them right up at the board and maintain all of the lacing of those cables which keeps the notes in order. And we'll see why that is in just a moment. All of this electronic equipment is going to be replaced by two types of boards. We have a micro MIDI board, that's our computer board, and then we have an input board. This input board is really unique in the industry because it requires no soldering. Once you cut those keyboard cables from the back of this large board, all you're going to do is you're going to connect them to this board by pushing these little triggers and putting the wire in. Here we have a piece of wire just like the wire attached to the keyboards in the Rogers organ. This same type wire is attached to the stops and the pedals as well. The input board has a series of little push plungers on it. And to make the connection, all we do is strip a very short piece of wire, press down the connector, and there you go. No soldering required. Now it's time to get rid of all this equipment. As I said, we've cut the keyboard cables and all the other extraneous cables. We just get rid of them. And this board can go away now and be replaced by a series of the other two boards we just saw. So, let's get rid of the old Rogers oscillators. What we have left is a series of the smaller micro MIDI boards and the input boards. And if you look very carefully, you can see that same yellow wire that we just talked about is connected to each one of these little plunge connectors in the same order that it was wired to the original Rogers oscillators. This makes the job extremely easy because for those of you who don't like to get into soldering, you're all done. All you have to do is strip the wire thread it through in the order that it came, these small holes in our fanning strips, and then connect them to the input boards. There's one input board for each keyboard. You can see the yellow wire goes up to the solo manual, the red wire goes to the great manual, and the purple wire goes to the accompaniment manual. There's another wire at this end that comes up from the pedal contacts and it goes into this input board along with the pistons. Now we're going to show you what we've done with the pistons on this organ when we get back around to the other side. But for here we have our input boards, our computer boards, a little 5 volt power supply, 
a 12 volt power supply for the lighting on the console, our main power amplifier, and the artisan sound engine. We are using the original speakers that came in this Rogers Trio. Some of the trios came with internal speakers and some of them came with external speakers. In either case, we're using the original speakers in this particular rebuild because these speakers were in good condition. You can see how neatly everything wires. Again, no soldering involved. Everything is either screw terminals or the push and release terminals. It makes a very easy job of rebuilding this Rogers Trio. We've come from the back of the Trio now around to the front of it and we can see some of the changes that we've made. One of the first things I want you to notice is the new light tab that goes around the horseshoe. This is an LED strip that we use. It's much brighter and has much better coverage than the incandescent bulbs that were originally used by Rogers in this application. We've also put those in the music rack so that now the music rack light and the horseshoe light is much brighter than it was before. It makes a very nice looking instrument. The stop rail, in this particular case, our customer wanted some of the stops changed. They wanted some additional ranks added to the instrument. So you can see on the stop rail that we have refaced a few of the stops to add the ranks the customer wanted to add to this instrument. Now the Rogers Trio is very nice because the entire stop rail just folds over and it allows you to have access for the wiring and the contacts. You can see here the contacts behind each stop when you depress the tab a little brass arm comes up and makes that contact. We take the wiring cables, the original wiring cables from the stop rail and we bring them to one of our input boards and this input board is wired exactly like the keyboard inputs. The very thin faces that we laser engrave, the engraving matches the Rogers engraving exactly. And it allows you to change these out since this particular type of stop tab is no longer available with the arm, the little brass arm on it we can use the original tab and reface it and it turns out very nice looking. Now one of the very nice things is that this entire stop rail is only connected to the rest of the organ by one data cable. This is a six wire phone cable that is wired especially for our system. Again the back of the Roger stop rail this is the input board that we have installed using the original Rogers cable and no soldering, just pressure connecting it right into our input board. We connect this entire assembly to the rest of the organ with one data cable. Snap and we're done. In this particular organ, the original Rogers Trio had presets only under one manual. It had an automatic rhythm unit under the upper manual and the customer did not want that anymore. So what we did is we gave him 22 pistons, all settable, and of course the original Rogers pistons had the wrong names engraved on them. Up here it was a rhythm unit, it had bossa nova and tango, rock and that type thing. So what we did is we used our laser engraver again and we made new faces for all of the pistons so that they all match across the organ. So now we have a set button so that you simply turn on a registration, press set and press the piston for that registration to be remembered on that particular piston. When you reactivate it, 
you can see the piston lights up to let you know that that combination is now active. And then there's a cancel button over on this side to bring you back to the use of the stop rail. No matter what stops you have turned on on the stop rail, the pistons will override those stops while you have the piston engaged. This Rogers Trio came with a mechanical glockenspiel that was mounted under the lid of the organ. We're able to keep that. Again, we use an artisan driver board. The cable that was going to the Rogers Electronics simply comes down to our driver board. It's connected by one data cable. And now the glockenspiel plays right from the artisan control system. Now we get to hear the final result. We've got 14 ranks of digital pipes all recorded from a mighty Wurlitzer Theater pipe organ now playing through this lovely Rogers Trio with the artisan sound system and artisan control system. Uh -huh.